Kevin. Jan Logie. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Social Development and asks, what actions, if any, has the Ministry of Social Development taken to ensure the well-being of children and families subjected to benefit sanctions, given that sanctions of sole parents have increased by 19.98 per cent in the last year? The Honourable Anne Tully. Oh, Mr Speaker, I'm not sure where that member is getting her figures from, or her maths, but they certainly don't match any of the figures that I have received from MSD. Sole parents are expected to be available for and looking for work, to care for their children, and to keep work and income updated on their progress. Beneficiaries receive a number of notifications before a sanction is even put in place. Beneficiaries with children can never be sanctioned for more than 50 per cent of their main benefit, and they continue to receive the full amount of any supplementary assistance. In fact, under this government, fewer people are having their benefits stopped because of sanctions, and there's been a 34 per cent reduction in suspensions and cancellations since 2011. Mr Speaker? Point of order. Um, Jan this Logie. was a question I noticed that was authenticated in a response to an order, answer, order, question order, for a written answer. Order. It's quite appropriate for a minister then dispute the figures that uh, the members provided as authentication for that question to be accepted. Quite acceptable. <laughs> Supplementary? <laughs> Supplementary, Mr Supplementary Speaker. question, Jan Logie. So what, if anything, is the minister doing to address the fact that two-thirds of sanctions have been for missing one appointment? which then halves a family's income, throwing children's lives into chaos as parents struggle to pay for rent and power. <coughs> the Honourable Ann Tolley. Well, in fact, that's not true. That's not correct. And there is no way that a sanction of, of that nature would be applied for missing one appointment. In fact, the member is correct that the most common, the most common reason for a sanction is missing appointments. But, Mr. Speaker, it's not too difficult to expect people to turn up for a pre-arranged appointment. If they can't make it, work and income people do go out and meet people in their own homes. A telephone call will actually avoid any further action. Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary question, Jan Logie. Does the Minister believe children's warmth or security of housing should ever be put at risk due to their parent missing an appointment because WINS hadn't processed their paperwork, they missed a bus, or there was a death in their family? The Honourable Anne Tolly. Mr Speaker, what I can assure that member of any, is if, that if any of those issues are raised with work and income right. by the applicant, they will be taken into account. Work and income is there to support those solo parents and to make sure that their children get the very best start they can possibly get in life. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Oh, who wants to go first? Point of order, Materia Turay. Mr Speaker, it's pretty clear from the question that the Minister was asked whether she believed a child should ever be put at Order, can I just have the point of and order? And that was not addressed in her answer. Sir. Order, if the member's referring to the last supplementary yes. that was asked, it was very clearly uh, addressed. The member took the opportunity of quoting, uh, quoting three reasons why a sanction may be imposed, and the minister took the opportunity of saying if the mi ministry knows of those three reasons, they wouldn't impose the sanction. It's definitely been addressed. The further supplementaries? Contrary to all evidence. Order. Supplementary. If the member wants to stay and continue her line of questioning, she better adhere to standing orders. Jan Logie, supplementary question. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Is the minister still hoping to achieve her better public service target of 25 per cent reduction in the number of people receiving a main benefit, despite the stormy economy ahead, by making life so stressful and precarious that people are coming off benefits even if they have no job to move into? The Honourable Anne Tolley. Uh, Mr Speaker, this, this government is determined to ensure that all New Zealanders have the opportunity to live full and successful lives. That includes people who are uh, living on a benefit, reliant on a benefit, and the children in those homes. We know that the best way out of poverty for those parents and children is through work. So we are definitely focused on achieving that 25 per cent reduction and helping those people live better lives. Supplementary Speaker. question, Jen Logie. 
Why is the Minister intent on holding the line that getting people off a benefit will improve child poverty, when the Household Income Survey released today shows that despite a drop in the number of children in beneficiary households, there are now an additional 45,000 New Zealand children living in poverty? The Hon. Ann Tolly. Mr Speaker, I would absolutely dispute the last statement that that member made, and that is a gross and serious misrepresentation of the report that was released today. <laughs> Question number 12, Todd Barclay. Uh, 